You're watching TVC Breakfast. Let's see what the headlines across Nigerian newspapers are this morning. We start uh, with our guests in the studio to help us make sense of all of this. I have uh, Dr. Dayo Kaede here. Uh, Dr. Kaede, good morning. Okay, good morning. Good to see you. Yeah, nice. And then let me thank, thank uh, a Nigerian that decided to be encouraging the youth okay. who organized the first ever Ifako Jai Table Tennis Junior Championship, okay. of which I also participated. Oh, I see. Thank you, Idera, that, for, for, for doing that for the Ijai youth. All right, that's fine. Thank, thank you very much. And uh, we have Obani Akinwale here. Nee, good morning. Good morning. Good to see you. Pleasure being here. Welcome. Thank you so much. Great. Let's begin uh, uh, from uh, Daily Times, Daily Times newspaper, where we're starting from. Peace will return to all terrorism affected communities, federal government assures, and urges Nigerians to continue to expect significant changes, improvement in nation security architecture. Okay, that's what uh, the assurance from the government is to nigerians let's have that on one side daily sun is next bloody weekend in niger and kaduna terrorists kill seven top jtf commanders corpses of residents bandits litter communities really really troubling and uh, uh, government confirms 11 dead 30 houses burnt in zangun kataf government killed soldier injure three in rivers you know that's Daily uh, Sun. Now, News Direct, Kaduna attack is what uh, News Direct is saying. Federal government vows to end insecurity as bandits burn 30 houses, kill 11. Dialogue with bandits have failed. Kill them, Emir of Katsina is saying this. Dialogue with bandits has failed. Kill them, Emir of Katsina is uh, quoted as saying this. All right, let's move to Daily Trusts. Daily Trust says dozens killed in Niger, Katsina, Kaduna states, or Kaduna attacks, and terrorists overrun Niger security base, kill 11 operatives. Bandits sack Zanfara uh, village despite 7 million Naira levy. Attacks uh, giving us sleepless nights, Katsina Emir tells Oshimbajo. There will be change soon, the vice president uh, assuring uh, the Emir there. Okay, from there, let's go to Blueprint newspaper. Blueprint says, how gunmen raided, killed 25 in Zango Kataf, Niger, in fresh attacks. Scores still missing, 40 houses raised. That's Blueprint newspaper. All right, from there, let's go to uh, This Nigeria. Uh, this Nigeria is talking about the uh, 2023 presidency. And it says, Nord's game plan. Why Buni is uh, courting Atiku, other opposition figures, and plots to sponsor surrogate presidential aspirants. South moves to truncate the plan. Okay, these are all issues on, on the political front. From there, let's go to first news. 2023, Afeni Ferry Dam Southwest aspirants supports Southeast for president. That is what uh, first news is saying here. From there, let's go to Nigerian Tribune. Nigerian Tribune says, 2023, power must shift to South Middle Belt Forum. It's saying this as uh, Haneze cautions Atiku. Right? All that on the front page of Nigerian Tribune. Abuja Inquirer, power tussle keeps Abuja pupils at home. Chairman, education scribes war over recruitment. FCT absorbs self of blame. That's Abuja Inquirer. From their business days next, how harsh visa requirements spur fraud in Nigeria. Right? That's another issue altogether, business day. National economy. Nigeria loses $1 billion to oil production deficit. More borrowing likely. Right? We're going to borrow again. Okay? That's the national economy. Daily independent. Is next, and he says fiscal indiscipline may worsen debt sustainability crisis. Right, fiscal indiscipline may worsen debt sustainability crisis. That's a daily independent leadership newspaper. Is next, and leadership says despite oil prices above forty dollars uh, benchmark in 2021, federal government states deplete excess crude amount or uh, crude account sorry by. 
37 million dollars right and only 35.368 million dollars left uh, government not saving excess crude sales right that's what uh, the leadership is saying here business am is the last one we're looking at now nigeria's growth outlook the economy sluggish at 1.6 percent boom at 3.5 percent gloom at minus 1.8 percent right analysts offer uh, possible 2022 scenarios all this on the front page of the business am all right now uh gentlemen let's get into this discussion now uh if you see the the uh, the story on the front page of several of the newspapers. I would like us to start with Daily Times. Ani, I'd like to start with you on this. Uh, peace will return to all terrorism-affected communities. Federal government assures. Well, of course, one would say this is not the first time that the federal government is assuring people. In fact, there were times where the government <laughs> had given deadlines. As mm. Boko Haram or terrorism is going to be over by the next two months or by the next six defeated. months. You know, by all December. That. But mm. here we are having uh, assurance from the federal government. What do you make of this assurance? Uh, How assured are you? With, without, being, uh, without sounding <coughs> immodest, uh, there is no doubt about this current administration has tried as much as possible to fortify our armed personnel from the Navy to Nigerian Air Force to Nigerian Army. Uh, no doubt about it, there has been uh, a newspaper headline grabbing increase for Nigerian police salary from 22,000 to 25,000, 20% increment, and what have you. But let's put it in perspective. As of today, the Nigerian police force is estimated to have about 371,000 personnel. Nigerian M forces is having about 250,000 personnel. The total number of personnel by both Nigerian armed forces and Nigerian police combined together is about 500,000 plus. We have a population of about 200 million. Now, in right now, right senses, and uh, we have some state that their large land expanse, I mean, in terms of the land mass, is as small than as a complete region in this country. Uh, so, uh, we begin to ask ourselves these questions. As much as we have fortified this military, how do you want to use about 500,000 personnel to police or to provide security for over 200 million citizens? Hmm. How do you intend to use a man who just lost his entire livelihood and his kids are not sure of tomorrow with 20% increment? to ensure that they safeguard the environment. How do you want to tell that woman to tell his military husband that put your life on the line when you know tomorrow is not secure? As much as I agree that the federal government under this current dispensation are not going to buy military equipment through one pastor jet or the other, but the fact has to be tabled. If Lagos State has a population of about 20 million and the total number of police personnel in Lagos is 33,000, why are we deceiving ourselves? Is 33,000 police even able to secure Alimosho alone? Every year we are saying community police, state police, federal government says no. How much has federal government funded police in any state compared to what each state government is doing? So, it is, uh, yes, the military will win the, the, the war. But what we have now is a guerrilla war. These people come and retrieve. So, for President Buhari to be giving us hope, yeah, as you see in C, he must not accept defeat. But the reality stares us in face in terms of the number of personnel, their welfare, and the reality of the land mass that we have. During the rainy season now, you know Borno become a very tough terrain mm. for our military to yeah. go over. Now Boko Haram will start swelling. Northwest is becoming unbearable. Uh, Southwest is becoming a ritualist den. ESN is there in the Southeast. And yet you have well equipped. At least better equipped, but a very terrible number of security personnel. So, for me to say we'll continue to do this, if you move people from northeast to northwest, the northeast will start really their ugly head. We have to do something about our, our policing system, our military system, that's of personnel. Mm -hmm. We need more personnel and well enumerated 
for people to go into those forces. Mm. And intelligence gathering, people yeah. have to trust. This is not that the ESS will be carrying gun on the road. Enough of all those mm. uh, show of shame that we are doing. Oh, it's okay. Well, uh, Dr. Kayode, um, when it comes to assuring Nigerians, of course, it's the duty of the government and commander-in-chief to let Nigerians know that they are on top of the situation and motivate the people, motivate the army, motivate citizens uh, towards a positive uh, stand when it comes to all of these. <clears throat> you see, I like what my brother said, that yes, government ever since have been trying to fortify mm. the armed forces. But the question is, is it about fortification or going straight to the root cause of all these issues? Let me give you an analogy before giving you the array of points. If you have been given a telephone, a nice telephone that everybody admires, and then you are not taught very well on how to use that telephone, then it is useless, isn't it? So, giving, fortifying our military without proper training is not part of it. That's number one. Well, well, number well, two. Well, when you say proper training, in the context of the use of equipment they are buying, is, is that the context? Exactly. And that's why I said a very nice telephone. Yeah. But, they but, have, they but, have but to be fair, they were, they were to, well trained. To, to be fair to, be fair to the Nigerian army, to be yeah. fair to the Nigerian army, we, in fact, they kept releasing that update. Nigerian army officials, if it is a Super Tucano or even Every the other ones they buy from, uh, Same by manufacturer, from Pakistan, six induction they, they, they go for, to these countries for training yes. and then when they come back, there's Mike, also a period of... Uh, Mike, hmm. Mike, is it about what is being said? Or is what, what we is have being done? On ground, yeah. Or what we have on ground? So we have to look at it from that angle. Like you just said, the, he also mentioned it, that the CNC will not want to give up. So you'll be giving words of hope. So are you sure all, all those things are not words of hope? You want to you want to see it playing out. If, 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 if you have a child and you are giving that child a lesson teacher, aside from the school, it goes. You want to see results. But when you are not seeing results, then does it mean that the lesson teacher is working? No. You are only telling her, yes, I've given him a lesson teacher. But we haven't seen any result. That is an aspect. Number two, how can you be using only the military without looking at the police. Is that something? I was just I was just smiling inside of me that yes, the military they are winning, but now it's a guerrilla warfare. The issue is you have to combine both the army and the police because if you look at it, the police are in the grassroots of the society. The police knows all the nooks and crannies of the society. They know everybody that comes in and goes out of the society. Or so if you know. are mm. if you are now relegating the police, you are still not working. You are still not working. Now let us also go another angle. These bandits, what what exactly are they looking for? You're going to find out that see, they have occupied a particular community, a particular village. They hosted their flags. And the authority are still telling us that these bandits, they don't know where they are. And there are reports at the stations, places that these people are here. Have we forgotten that ever since we started school in geography, in our geography in those days, they will say bauxite is also place, mm. gold is also place, this is also place. Is it not because of all those resources that these guys are moving in to cut away our resources? If no, then why why are there in the news sometimes ago that even some helicopters were coming down and taking off from all those areas? Now, what are the roles of our leaders? And when I'm talking of our leaders, I'm talking about both political, traditional, and everybody. What are their roles? There are some lands that are being sold in some areas. That have been grabbed in some areas mm. by foreigners, and the people are complaining. And the others, the leaders of those areas, were not were, were just looking away. Why? So all these things need to be brought together holistically before we can mm. get all these bandits out of our society. Because I have to tell you this: 
There are a lot of, a lot of research that some of us, we do do. Africa is having a lot of resources. And there's no doubt about it. The, 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 the other part of the world, they're always looking towards Africa to come and cut away our resources. And that is why you see them even selling us arms and ammunition to fight ourselves. Bridging each other against each other. Brothers against brothers. Sisters against sisters. To fight ourselves so that when we are not settled, they be able to have chance to be cutting away our resources. So, so, so we need to also look at this. Are you saying that the West is giving arms to African countries to fight themselves? Is that what you're saying? I am not I am not just saying it. It is what we know that is happening. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's, it let's, is what we know that is happening. Anyway, I, I wouldn't want to go wants to go into that uh, mix right now because there are there are perspectives to it because if anyone is a, is a business international business mm -hmm. Man, mm -hmm. and there are there are legitimate contractors mm -hmm. that you know deal in weapons mm -hmm. for countries, for agencies and mm -hmm. all of that. Mm -hmm. Of course, anybody who of has course. the license to come and buy weapons should buy right. weapons. Yes, you know. So that's that business, you know, goes out, goes on across the world. Don't let us also forget. But what we are now saying so, so is, what we are now saying yeah. is, we Nigerians should be careful. Yeah, as so, regards all this. Yes, because it if, is a war against our resources. Yeah, if, it's, if, it's beyond uh, just. Uh, I, 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 I don't want to say. Anyway. I, don't want, I don't want to. I don't want to say. Uh, it's a Western uh, conspiracy. Conspiracy. I want to say it's uh, a conspiracy of uh, what I call uh, moral, decay, moral decay. It's not total. It's part uh, of it. And, and and I, I, what, I say, what I would say moral decay is, uh, I know in those days if I wake up in the morning and I want to greet my father or is my father's friend, uh, you dare not bend. You do full prostrate. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And I know these days uh, I've seen parents whereby they see a small boy want to greet and they say, no, 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 chop knuckle. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, those things start creeping in not because the West wants it, it's because we decide to live our life the way we choose. Uh, if you look at the president of uh, the Prime Minister of India, Modi, mm. you will never see him dress in suits, mm. right? Yeah, uh, Modi. And mm. and you will discover that uh, either you like Buhari or not, I think we used to Buhari put on suits, mm. but you are now on this stage now we are putting on suits. So whether we like it or not is what we decided to attract. And as such, uh, until we break, we break that gap whereby we, don't, we no longer give uh, what is not morally right. I say, for example, I have a local government council in my world, in my streets, and he decided to tie the road on my street, and I'm not asking questions. Where did we get this allocation for this road turning? And is it that we're supposed to get this or because we are living on our street, we get this done? Now, let's move to uh, Kaduna and Niger states. I luckily serve in Borono State. And I will tell you that distance between Mongunu and Marte by road is about seven hours. And That's one state. That is one state. Mm -hmm. And I remember traveling from Duguri down to my uh, primary station in Mongunu. Uh, that would take you about three to four hours to travel. And I can tell you without missing word that if you put the total number of police officers in Lagos, cannot police Mongunu in terms of landmass. So, it's as if you saw somebody, even when Evans, when Evans the kidnapper, was staying in Magodo, how long did it take us to identify until he kidnapped Ken the former chairman of a local government? So, it's been difficult to identify. Before now, I can tell you where I grew up, we know ourselves. Mm. Now, yes, government has its own fault. The bandits are, 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 are known to be in a particular place. But you and I also know the rule of engagement internationally that minimum civilian casualty. If you deploy a super to Kano to Mangunu Marte, uh, Kukawa, uh, Biu, mm -hmm. you wipe off all those areas. Who are the people you are securing? The next question we need to ask ourselves is that in Nigeria as we have today, don't we have people, individuals, that their job is to support a war? Look at Benjamin Adekunle during the Civil War. He had to help the Nigerian government to be able to win the war as an individual person that has his phone. There was a military man that, that uh, Jonathan government contracted in South Africa to help during those days. So there are other international agencies that what they do is to, and it is not peculiar to Africa. Mm. 
we've known, for example, what is happening in UAE, Saudi Arabia now, where they are throwing stuff in. Is it West conspiracy? So you always have dissident within the system. But how the system again is able to react to it also matters. Now, if Nigerian police is paying 5,000 naira as allowance, and a new recruit in Boko Haram is paying $5,000, who will you work for? Who will you work for? So, in terms of poverty, poverty is endemic in such a way that people don't even care who governs them. Whoever can put three square meal on the table a day is what they see as their president, their chairman. See, I bet with you, most of the senators, as of rep members from some of those states, have not been there twice this year. Who is to be held responsible for but that? Boko Haram has been there every day, and when they bring food for them, Boko Haram shared. You will even and see. That's what I was talking so, about. So, the so, role so, of leadership. So what I'm not saying is that's the role of leadership. I'm coming, you know, sir. I'm coming, let, let I'm coming, What I'm saying, in essence, is that until we begin to look at what are those things that are value system prior to now. See, we can't say anything. Those in government are not from Jamaica. They are also from the same value system. So if as individuals within our community, we do not value life. People are dying on the road. What you see young guys and young women doing is to carry their phone and be doing life well, Instagram. We are supposed to hold responsible. So we are supposed to also hold ourselves responsible. First of all, let us be responsible citizens. If somebody commits crime in my street, the police at K2 police station will not know. If I don't flag it that this is then for criminal, look at the Sokai Nibadon, where they are killing people for money rituals every day. People have seen this thing happening there every day. If I don't complain to the police, give intelligence, because what do we call policing? It's all about information. <laughs> the people we recruit into the Nigerian police force, they are not ghosts. The people in the Nigerian army, they are not ghosts. They live with us. And if a man... I would, rather, I would rather not stay with you in the studio. Somebody call me tomorrow and say, hey, come this morning, I'm going to prorate your one hour at about 5,000 Naira. I will ask you, Ogama, what are you going to give me when I come to your station? Mm. So what I'm saying in essence is that, first of all, as individuals, we need to reassess what our value system. Then, if we have a value system, it is easier for us to vote people, elect leaders, select leaders, that also believe in our value system. And that but value system needs to be promoted by the people. For instance, let me give you an instance. Yes, sir. Look, look at what I said at the, uh, at the opening remark of this thing. Mm. Yes, sir. Somebody decide to use our own money yes, to sir. sponsor the youth. Exactly, sir. I haven't known that. Look, this thing, when you don't take care of your youth, is going to be a problem tomorrow. Of course, I will not say so. So who is supposed to take care of those youths? Mm. Because the problem we are having now is the neglect. The neglect of the past that had been over the years and the thing is now spewing us in the face so the issue is you and i we know yes we have responsibilities but the person the the the, the clique that is supposed to come in immediately now mm. is the government because the government is a continuum mm -hmm. since 79 mm -hmm. since 69 since 59 youth had been left alone Look at look at what you said just now. So people instead of instead of you to ask the youth to prostrate and greet as you used to be, he say chop knuckle. Mm -hmm. Is that how it's supposed to be? No. So what I'm saying in essence is this: for us to be able to cope mm -hmm. insurgency, insecurity, mm -hmm. and all that in this country, mm -hmm. it still behove on the government. How? By providing good education. Mm -hmm. It's not the kind of education we are having now. No. It's not the education of but you know most listen of now, okay. listen now, it's not the kind of education that see you just have to go to school and pass. No. It is about education, it's not a meal ticket. Rather, a way of showing you how to survive. My great grandfather, my great grandfather, my great grandfather, my great grandfather, and his grandfather. It's okay, gentlemen. The education level no, 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 are no, no, not no, no. as education, quite as what we have here. I'm not saying I education in terms of four walls of the university. It's not education in in terms of four walls of the university or secondary school. No, it's about how you are being trained from the beginning in your house, the family unit. And then what, right. are the roles, what are the roles that government is playing for family unit to stay intact and give proper education All right. to their offspring? Well, gentlemen, the point, the point there is the, the trends are changing mm -hmm. in such a way that we are impacting each other 
like he was talking about the issue of chopping knuckles here and there instead of prostrating. Of mm. course, the world cannot mm. remain the same. He's revolving. He's revolving. There is Musa knocking so, already said, that's gritty. <laughs> <laughs> no, the, but the, the but issue but is what the, we the, see. The, the point what is, we see, we need to we, domesticate we, properly. Yeah, but you, not you just know, the, do you know an Indian employee will not stand in front of his CEO without putting that at the back and read this till now? No, of course. The, those those, you those, know, those, 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 those are, are an Indian employee. That are no, they will still respect the staff. But when they saw, they domesticated it. So if it, but we are not domesticating what we are saying. We are we, not domesticating. We, we, need, we are putting we it in your whole like that. Yeah, we need to leave now. The point there is there are different mechanisms in different countries on how to maintain and sustain their cultures and mm -hmm. all of that. Mm -hmm. These are things we have to look at. But mm -hmm. thank you so much for uh, coming, uh, Dr. Dyer Thank nice you for coming. And Albania Kiwale, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Great.